another gutty performance from Tommy Armstrong, and sadly, another injury. In the game against Minnesota, Armstrong was just enough for Nebraska to pull out the win and stay alive to win the division, but he hobbled off the field with a hamstring injury. This Saturday is his final chance to play at home in Lincoln, Nebraska. And for more on this, we bring in Matt Davison now, who joins us from Lincoln. Matt, it's a recurring question, unfortunately. What's the latest on Tommy Armstrong's health? Hey, Mike. Yeah, it seems like it's a weekly deal. We're talking about Tommy Armstrong and whether or not he'll be able to play. And this is an injury that he has not had to deal with before. It's a left hamstring injury and happened on a touchdown run. And really, at this point in the week, we really don't know. That's the answer. I think we're learning more every day. Uh, I guess I'm on the show to give an opinion, so I guess I'll tell you, I don't think he's going to play, hmm. but, but I would never count Tommy Armstrong out. You know, this guy always finds a way. He's a tough competitor. Everybody knows that, that have seen him play over the last few years, and, and so he may play Saturday. Right now, if I had to put money on it, I would say he doesn't. Well, if he doesn't play, perhaps that'll mean they have to have extra emphasis on their running game, a running game that was really good. The first five games of the year, they had 200 yards or more in every game but one. The last five games, they haven't one time gotten over 200 yards rushing. How come? Well, I think there's a few reasons. One, you, you look at the competition and the non-conference and early in the season, I think Nebraska played lesser opponents. I think that had something to do with it. You put in back-to-back -back games on the road against Wisconsin and Ohio State, and that'll hurt anybody's numbers. And then I think it's been injuries, too. Nebraska's really gotten beat up, Mike, over the course of the year. And you look at the offensive line, they've missed a lot of games. They haven't played as a cohesive unit a lot of the season. And Tommy Armstrong has had his share of injuries, too, and he's been a bigger part of the running game this year, almost 500 yards on the ground from Tommy this year. So I think it's a combination of things, but definitely it's been a point of emphasis for Nebraska this year to try to run it more effectively and to try to run it more consistently than they did a year ago. And so um, I think the, the next couple of games is going to be really important, especially if Tommy Armstrong isn't 100%. Well, and whether he is or isn't there and whether the running game is good or bad, uh, at least they got the home crowd. And playing at Memorial Stadium, once again, great for them. They're 6-0 and at home right now. This is the final home game of the year. For those who haven't been able to be at Memorial Stadium for a home game, what makes it so tough for visitors? Well, good question. I, I think for those that have been here, they've seen that structurally it's an impressive place. And I think everybody has an affinity for their home field. And Nebraska fans are no different. We feel like this place is pretty special. So, you know, structurally, I think it's, it's impressive. It's steep and over 90,000 fans now. Um, I think the fans have a big part of it, obviously. We have fans that are knowledgeable about football. We have fans that know when to be loud and, and when to let the offense communicate with each other. I think we have a great sound system. The band does a good job. I think they do a great job getting the fans involved in the game here at Nebraska. And then let's be honest, I mean, players win games. And over the course of many decades now, Nebraska's had good players that have come through this program. And I think that goes a long way in winning games as well. And this game will be senior day for the Huskers. How will this crop of seniors be remembered? Well, there's a whole bunch of them. There's 30 seniors on this team. And so all of them have had their share of the impact on this program. But I think they'll be remembered as hopefully one of those classes that really got this program in the right direction. Anytime you go through a coaching change, I think that's difficult on a student athlete. And, and the players never sign up for that. And you go from Bo Pelini to Mike Riley, and I think this senior class, you look at what happened a year ago with Nebraska going 5-7 and seven in the regular season, they really wanted to right the ship this year. So far, they have 8-2, and two, a chance to go 10-2, and two, and a chance to do some great things this year. So I think they'll be remembered if they can finish this year strong as maybe that class that helped Nebraska turn the corner and really get on the right path under Mike Riley. Before we let you go, Matt, sort of a bigger picture discussion, the national theme of college football is holy cow the big 10 i mean there are four teams in the top eight you got two teams in the top four right now and there's a lot of chatter about the potential of one league the big 10 getting two in the playoff what are your thoughts on that well we'll, we'll see how things shake out i mean that's the bottom line we'll see if penn state can get it done the next couple of weeks and and we'll see what happens with ohio state and michigan obviously if michigan beats ohio state goes on and wins the conference championship, then that pretty much takes that out of the equation. Uh, but if Penn State can get things done and go on and win the conference, uh, I think that's huge. 
and it could happen. I think you look around the country, and most people would say the Big Ten Conference is the best conference in the nation. And so if there was a conference to get to, I think it would be ours, and I think it would be justified if it comes down to that. But really, there's a lot of football to be played. I don't like it that you have a major conference in the SEC that's playing some of these non-con games in November as you're trying to evaluate these teams and they come in and play a lesser opponent in the middle of November. I don't really think that's right as the, as the committee is trying to look at these teams late in the season. And so there's a lot of things that go into this and, and a lot of football to be played. But I think it'd be great if the Big Ten got two teams in, obviously. I think that would be really good for the conference. Should point out, too, the SEC also has a fourth non-conference game where the Big Ten only has three, the Pac-12 only has three, the Big 12 only has three, et cetera. Matt Davison, as always, great, great talking to you, man. Thanks, Mike.